हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई सी ए कमाक्षी खनिलवाल वेलकम यू ऑल टू माई नेक्स्ट वेबिनार टूडे आई वुड बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ जी एस टी ऑन एम्प्लॉई री इम्बर्समेंट्स द टैक्सीबल इवेंट इन द जी एस टी इज द सप्लाई ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज सप्लाई ऑफ गुड्स और सर्विस टू अ रिलेटेड पार्टी अ टर्म दैट इंक्लूड एम्प्लॉज ऑल्सो विदाउट कंसिड्रेशन वेन मेड in the course or the furtherance of the business is taxable under gst now there are two types of supply one from the employee to the employer and second from the employer to the employee in case of supply from the employee to the employer the same would not be treated as supply provided the same is in the course of or in relation to the employment the second type of supply is from the employer to the employee like free food facility guest room facility all these will be considered as supply even if they are made without consideration an exception has been carved out in the gst act schedule 1 provides that gifts not exceeding rupees 50000 in value in a financial year by an employer to an employee shall not be treated as supply of goods and services however the term gift has not been defined in the gst law going by its dictionary meaning a gift is something voluntary supplied without any consideration it does not stem from any contractual obligation seen in this light only items incidental to employment like an award to an employee or diwali gifts should come under the GST levy if these exceed the monetary limit specified per employee now the moot question is whether the provision of a certain facility is a supply of goods and service or is it a provision of a benefit to employees arising out of an employment contractual obligation broad principle for analyzing whether a transaction between an employer and an employee would be liable to GST or not first any facility which is common to all employees and there is no identified employee or customer such as a free tea coffee etc in office should not be liable to GST if any facility is provided for official usage by employee in the normal course of employment such as office laptop parking etc also should not be liable to GST any reimbursements to employees such as mobile bills etc is not a supply per se by the employer to employee and hence should not be liable to GST any other supplies by the employer which is not in the normal course of employment is to be analyzed on a case to case basis so on the basis of this i have divided the employee reimbursements into three categories first reimbursements which are part of the cost to the company ctc package second reimbursements which are provided in the normal course of employment like free tea coffee etc in office traveling reimbursements and third is the other reimbursements like diwali gifts special award to an employee etc let us understand these categories one by one first type of reimbursement is reimbursements which are the part of ctc like medical insurance for employees and family members personal accident insurance so there is no underlying supply per se by the company to its employees no charges are recovered on account of medical insurance from employees supply is made by the insurance company directly to the employee and not to the company thus no gst liability shall arise on such type of expenses now second type of is expenses is the expense incurred by the employee in the normal course of employment that is expenses incurred for the purpose of business provided to all employees and not to a single or certain specific employees like provision of subsidies of free food company provides free food to its employees on daily basis or arranges catering service for special occasions like diwali etc in such cases there shall be no gst liability on the company next is the free or subsidized cab facility such type of expenses may or may not be covered in the employment contract 
in case it is covered under the employment contract and is a contractual obligation then no gst however in case it is not covered under the employment contract then gst liability to arise since the transaction would be treated as a supply by the employer to the employee being a related party transaction an employee not eligible to claim input tax credit gst would need to be paid as per the open market value which may be considered as the amount paid by the company to the transporter next is the mobile handsets given to the employees for official purpose reimbursement of mobile phone bill etc no gst liability on reimbursements made by the employee since there is no underlying supply per se by the company to the employees next type of reimbursement is the recovery on account of loss of id cards and other assets such recovery may be treated as recovery of liquidated damages and hence should not qualify as supply liable to gst next type of reimbursement is the sale of used assets like laptop desktop etc which are capitalized in the books of the accounts of the company these assets are given to the employees at a subsidized rate so such transaction will be treated as a supply and accordingly liable to gst next type of reimbursement is the car lease scheme that is the car is obtained on financial lease by the company from the dealer and given to the employees for official use car is recorded as an asset in the company's books no gst liability since such benefits are extended by the company to the employee for official use or purpose next type of reimbursement is the employee referral policy cash allowance to be given for successful reference tds is deducted on such cost no gst liability since the consideration that is the referral bonus paid by the company is towards the services provided by the employee in the normal course of employment next type of reimbursement is the employee welfare scheme such as the offsite camping company allocates certain amount for each employee in relation to such recreational activities no gst liability since there is no underlying supply per se by the company to its employees next type of reimbursement is the free gym or crutch facility company often provides free gym or crutch facility to the employees without recovery of any amount so no gst liability since such benefits are extended by the company as a common facility to all employees in general and there is no identified employee to whom such supply is made now coming over to the third set of expenses other reimbursements which are neither part of the ctc nor provided in the normal course of employment like gifts such as t-shirts stationery memento models trophies etc are distributed to the employees on diwali or farewell gst is payable in case the value of the gifts provided to an employee during a financial year that is per employee per financial year exceeds rupees 50000 then open market value shall be considered for the purpose of valuation tax is required to be paid with the total value exceeds rupees 50000 for example in case the individual gifts given during a financial year exceeds inr 50000 say inr 55000 the gst will be paid on 5000 only now second example in case a single gift exceeding inr 50000 say 55000 is given to an employee so gst should be applicable on full 55000 rupees now in case of employee reimbursements for purchases made by an employee for business purpose like office stationery housekeeping expenses photocopy expenses from unregistered dealers gst shall be applicable under reverse charge only if the value of all such expenses exceeds rupees 5000 per day that is no gst if the value of such expenses from all unregistered dealers per day is less than rupees 5000 thus a company must plan its expenditure from unregistered dealers so that it must be within the limit of 5000 per day else we would be required to pay gst on the full amount now next point is whether the company 
can avail ITC of the expenses incurred on employee reimbursements on which GST is paid, like medical insurance, etc. Now, Section 17, Subsection 5 of the CGST Act contains the list of services for which input tax credit will not be available. Some of these facilities extended to employees, such as free or subsidized food and beverages at the workplace, sponsorship of club or fitness centers, membership, cap facilities, group life and health insurance. So, only in respect of these services where the employer is obligated under any law to provide the same to its employees, the credit shall be allowed to the company. So, here is the summary of the type of employee reimbursements and its applicability in GST. In case the reimbursements are the part of the CTC, then in that case, no GST. Reimbursements which are provided in the normal course of employment, then also it is not liable to GST. In the case of other reimbursements like gifts, we have to see if the gifts exceed the value of rupees 50,000 in a financial year per employee, then it shall be liable to GST. Hope you all found the content useful. In case if you have any queries, you can email me the same at my mail ID. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel CA Kamakshi Khandilwal for more videos on GST. Thank you. Have a nice day.